Welcome to the video. In this video we're going to be talking about two new pieces of technology. Well, new to me. One of them is of the latest generation of X-series receivers. Uh, this is the X4R. We've already looked at other receivers on the channel called like the X8R, which is a lot bigger, uh, physically larger, and the X4R is kind of the sub-mini receiver, very similar to the D4R2, which is kind of the previous incarnation. And we'll talk a little bit about the differences between these two receivers. Second thing we'll talk about is this thing. This is an FR Sky sensor hub. We'll talk about what this is and how you use it. Before we get into detail though, I do have to say a very big thank you to Banggood.com for sending both of these things for me to try. If you want to find out more and have a look at them, I'll put links in the description below the video. So the first one we'll talk about is the X4R. So the X4R, as we've already said, is very, very similar to the D4R2. Now the D4R2 is the one that we're currently using on the Pixhawk build that we're doing on the channel right now. It provides four channels of output, but it also allows you to have a PPM output, so we can actually have a full up to eight channels out of a single cable. And that's how we're running it on the Pixhawk series. And again, I'll put a link to that series so you can see this being used in action. Great little receiver, small, lightweight, has a couple of analog ports at the side for telemetry, and you can also use this really well with things like the NASA 32, where you can actually connect telemetry to these white pins at the side and get information about your battery voltage, GPS position, and everything that the NASA 32 can see. The X4R is different in two fundamental ways. The first is that it actually outputs SBUS, not PPM. So again, you can connect it to your craft using a single cable. And this time, rather than support up to eight channels, it supports up to 16. So if you want to do lots of things like controlling your PID settings and tuning and using all of those switches on your Tronus radio, the X4R is a great choice. The other thing it has as well on the side is this time it has connections to smart port sensors. So we've seen the smart port sensors on things like the 8XR and here's the smart port connection on the 8XR and here is the LiPo checker which has a little OLED screen and as well as showing you the status of your battery it also feeds that information through. There are loads of different types of sensors available for smart port including GPS, uh, accelerometers, variometers, temperature, voltage sensors, current, you name it. So this allows you to connect to those smart port sensors automatically. Now the way smart port works is it's quite clever in that you'll notice that the smart port sensor itself, this LiPo, actually has two connections here for the smart port pieces. And what you do is you connect one side to the receiver and then the other side, you daisy chain out to the next smart port sensor that you have. So you have them linked together. So you might start with voltage sensor, then it might go to a temperature sensor next, then might go to the GPS. And that's a really cute way of connecting everything together. It's like a little computer network is how smart port actually works. That is absolutely supported, even though we're using this really small receiver. This receiver is one I'm actually using to build the Seriously Pro board, the new clean flight capable flight controller on the channel. And again, I'll put a link in the description so you can actually see this being used. The second thing to talk about is the sensor hub. The sensor hub is from the days before SmartPort, where we had things like the D4R2. So it may be that what you really want to do is connect multiple sensors to a non-smart port enabled receiver, but you don't have the option to daisy chain like you can with the smart port pieces. The sensor hub is a way for you to connect all of the sensors into the hub, and then the hub then connects into the receiver. So you can see here there are connections for fuel, GPS, variometers, voltmeters, a couple of temperature sensors, RPM, and other things as well. So this is something that you would use if you're not using smart port technology and you want to connect multiple sensors up and have them all connected to a single receiver. So thank you again for Banggood for sending this stuff to me. Hopefully those two things make sense and you now know what they are if you see them on the internet. So we'll finish the video there. 
and I'll leave you with the links where you can see some of this technology being used in anger. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.